Coming up on the final 2015 episode of the Sports Desk. 2015 brought the city of Torrance plenty of memorable moments. Together, we will take a look back at some of the stories and highlights that made Torrance's sports scene so special this year. Woo! -wee! It's the sauciest look back show ever coming at you right now. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Year in Review episode of the Sports Desk, where we will hop into Doc Brown's DeLorean and take a look back at some of the top moments from 2015. It was a wild, wild, I'll say it one more time, wild year to put it in call-in terms for you. We watched four out of the five Torrance Area Girls basketball programs capture CIF Southern Section titles. The Torrance Tata softball squad brought home the program's first CIF Southern Section title. And that's just the first five items on my 2015 grocery list. Speaking of the Tata softball squad, Jade Arcelanian had a junior year she will never forget. To quote my dear friend and fellow sportscaster, Champ Kine, whammy! Jade Arcelanian skyrockets in flight. Get out of here. Home run after home run. Jade Arcelanian, boom sauce. That's out of here. That's after home run. That pretty much sums up Jade Arcelanian's junior year of softball. She went yard 10 times, breaking the school's single season home run record, which was previously held by Cameron Watts. It's a big accomplishment. I know a lot of people don't think like I could do it. You know, I've always been told I only hit line drives and uh, I'm not like a power hitter, like a four hitter, but yeah, I just, I don't know, feels good. Jade's softball days go all the way back to when she was a youngster. She started off playing baseball, but shortly after made the switch to softball, where she was a part of the Torrance Girls Softball League. The rest is history. It was a great experience. It was, it was like a family. Like, every team was great. It was just camaraderie. It was even competitive when we were younger. Not like crazy, but you could just tell that there's gonna be some good athletes coming out of that organization. Her TGSL playing days bring us to now. Out of Arcelanian's 10 jacks this season, there is one that stands out from the rest. No, bottom seven, still no score. Jane Arcelanian, boom sauce. She goes yard, that's a solo shot. That's her walk-off game winner. She's a walk-off solo shot against Howard Miller in Torrance's biggest rival, the North Saxons. I actually thought it was a pop fly, so I was sprinting pretty hard. <laughs> at least trying to make it to second. <laughs> and then it went out and then everyone greeted you at home plate. Yeah, I just, I just heard a, a roar and I was like, I, it's out. I was like, yeah. I was like, thank God. <laughs> it was a relief. And the ball game is over. Bringing home the first CIF Southern Section Championship in program history, check. Jade R. Salanian says, hey, what you can do, I can do better. Breaking the school's single season home run record, check with her final season of softball coming up soon. Arcelanian wants to do whatever she has to do to help her team win. It's definitely all about the team. I mean, if me breaking records and that is gonna help us, then that's what I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to do. Um, I gotta give it all, especially next year, it's last year. Staying on the diamond, South Baseball has made two consecutive trips to the CIF Finals. Both, unfortunately, didn't end the way they wanted, but this past year, the Green Squad showed why they were such a successful baseball program when they came together for a teammate during one of the most trying times of his life. The South High Spartans have discovered the keys to a successful season after winning the Pioneer League title. Last year, we only had 18 years. This time, we have about 13, so we are definitely more matured, and we are a lot stronger with pitching and hitting. Let's go out and, uh, and play as hard as we can and let the chips fall where they may. And they, they've kind of had that attitude here and, and uh, they've played some of their best baseball that they've played all year long. And of course, what's great baseball without having something to play for? This year we talked about playing for each other and Craig Brown and Chris Carmona, uh, my friend and my dad. And then we were able to come through and get that win in Pioneer League title. The Spartans lost a very special fan in the stands, but gained a new angel in the outfield. 
Taylor Carmona's father passed away recently and the team decided to dedicate the 2015 season to their number one fan. It's hard coming to these games because this he loved coming to these games, but it makes me so happy that we have all these people here supporting us and here for my brother, and this is my brother's place to get away from everything and to just have a good time, and it's nice knowing that this season's dedicated to my dad and he's still here with us. Coach Grady expressed that although winning is great, this is more than just baseball. We're uh, pretty much a family first, and then we talked about you know trying to play the game right, and uh, and that's secondary. But um, you know these guys really are a really tight group, and um, you know it's really them. It's really them that keep each other together. Of course, let's not forget the new angel who watches over the South High Spartans. That was watching over me, playing, and I know he'd be proud of me. It means a lot. It was a good day. Brittany Johnson for the Sports Desk. Facial hair comes in many different shapes and sizes. You have your average chin strap, the Fu Manchu, and only for special circumstances, a soul patch. Now, who wouldn't want one of those? Facial hair is just another one of those issues that literally grows on you. And I mean that in the most literal way. It's that 6 a.m. question when you get out of bed and you ask yourself, should I shave, bro? Here's the story of Nick Beardsley. His last name quite literally gives you a hint at where I'm going with this. Nick the Beard Beardsley has been on the South Spartans baseball varsity squad since the end of his sophomore year of high school. The righty has seen plenty of success on the mound over the years. While Nick may be known by coaches and fellow teammates for his pitching and sense of humor, there's just one more thing his incredible facial hair. I mean, last year I was the first one to grow a beard and then I kind of encouraged everyone's like, oh, that's cool, let's get, let's make that our thing. Let's, South High, what are they known for? Beards. So then this year came back. Parents love it because it's kind of intimidating, but I mean, it makes me look older. So yeah, I'm shaking in my boots right now. Facial hair in sports seems to have taken on a life of its own, especially in the pros. And it hasn't been something that started just yesterday. It's been going on for years. Guys like Lanny McDonald, Alexi Lalas and Eddie Murray all have their own styles, some intimidating and some just hilarious. Even now, gnarly facial hair just keeps on growing, literally. The most notable, how could we ever forget former San Francisco Giant pitcher Brian Wilson, who also happens to be Nick Beardsley's biggest beard inspiration. I saw him pitch a bunch and I was like, man, that's sick, like, that's intimidating. I wouldn't want to face him. So. Just, uh, eighth grade came around, shaved every day, just to make sure it came in nice by the time high school was over, and now I grow it out. What do his coaches and fellow teammates think? Well, the responses weren't too predictable. Uh, it's a nice beard. It's the nicest beard I've seen on a high school student, that's for sure. What do you, what's his nickname? You guys have a nickname? Beardsley. Beardsley. The, <laughs> the beard. Fear the beard. Fear the beard. Beardsley. I mean, it just adds to his mojo, really. It's, uh, yeah, I certainly can't grow one like that, man. Uh, it's pretty impressive. You know, I mean, you gotta have you gotta have to, a little bit to back it up. If you're gonna grow a beard like that and get on the mound, you better have the stuff to back it up, and uh, and he does. So, uh, you know, good job, Nick Beardsley. <laughs> Backing it up on the diamond, he's done just that, helping the Spartans appear in two straight CIF Southern Section Finals. Whether it's the Walrus, the Caveman, it doesn't matter. Unibrows have even become cool. Just look at Anthony Davis. Now, whoever would have thought that would happen? His name is Nick Beardsley. He does have one heck of a beard. Ironic, maybe just a little bit. As his teammates say, fear the beard. That was a pretty beardy package. Every October, volleyball programs all over the country hold their annual Dig Pink volleyball match in honor of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Right here in Torrance, South's 2015 Dig Pink match held extra special meaning for one of their own. The South Varsity Girls Volleyball Squad is more than just a team on the court. More importantly, they are a family. We have just an incredible group of girls that are just so supportive of each other. They're, they're so nice and just, it, it, it's a huge bond. Again, it's, it sucks that we have to bond over something like that, um, but it's great to see the girls come together and be so supportive of her. Pink signs filled the South Gymnasium for their annual Dig Pink volleyball match. 
some in memory of lost loved ones, and others honoring those that are currently battling breast cancer. For South senior Bailey Oliver, South's dig pink game against West really hit home. This year it means a lot more to me considering my mom just got diagnosed two weeks ago and um, it just makes me more aware and um, more excited about the game. Just a few weeks ago, Bailey Oliver's mother, Lori Oliver, received the devastating news. She was diagnosed with breast cancer. While the Olivers prepared to embark on a difficult journey, Bailey's second family was right there to help. She's had some ups and downs, she's been hurt, she's come back, she's improved so much from last year. And it's just like every time she takes two steps forward, something comes up and she seems to get knocked back down, you know, get, getting hurt or finding out about her mom. Um, but she's done a good job of being able to focus in the gym and just work on getting better and being a great teammate. She's just one of the greatest kids I've ever met. She has the greatest attitude towards life and this isn't even knocking her down. So for her to get back and play on the court like she did tonight and the day at the practice that she found out, she played out of her mind. So it's just one of those characteristics that you wish that you had and I can only love her for that. After every spike, after every block, win or lose, South Volleyball is more than just a team. They are a family. Our second summer show of 2015 took us to Torrance Beach for the fourth annual Surfing for a Cure Surf Relay. There were so many amazing stories from that day, but there was one in particular, particular that really stood out. Here's the inspirational story of Jack Witherspoon. This is Jack Witherspoon. If you don't know Jack, he seems like your average 15-year-old kid. Happy, healthy, and full of life. But Jack's life has been far from normal. Behind the blonde hair and the big smile, there is an incredible story. When he was just two years old, Jack was diagnosed with leukemia. He underwent chemotherapy and defeated the cancer. But when he was six years old, he relapsed and his leukemia came back. Once again, Jack underwent chemotherapy and on his road to recovery, he found a new hobby, a hobby that helped him get through the toughest of days. I found the Food Network and all the cooking shows and I really fell in love with cooking and the idea of creating new recipes. And during those times when I was in the hospital, I couldn't hang out with my friends, I couldn't do sports, I wasn't at school. I just, but I could always cook. And it was always something that when I would be bored and laying in my bed, I would think of new recipes, think of new ideas for a dish. And it was something that really got me through a lot of hard times. A few years after defeating leukemia for the second time, the unthinkable happened. Jack relapsed again when he was 11, and this time he had to receive a bone marrow transplant on top of the chemotherapy. Doctors were very uncertain about his chances to survive. But like he had done before, Jack fought the disease, and again he defeated it. During his relapses with leukemia, Jack's therapeutic hobby of cooking became something more. He authored an inspirational cookbook of all of his favorite recipes. The book, called Twist It Up, is available to buy all of the proceeds go to hospital charities and pediatric cancer research. Jack's cookbook and his incredible story garnered some national attention. It also garnered him a whole lot of TV time. I've been on Tonight Show, I've been on the Home and Family Show, I've been on the Queen Latifah Show, I've been on uh, the Murray Osmond Show, I've been on the Rachel Ray Show, I've been on the Rachel vs. Guy Kids Cook-Off, and uh, it's just been amazing. As if publishing a cookbook and being a minor celebrity isn't enough, Jack is also the face of numerous different charities and has helped raise well over $150,000 for cancer research. He says he hopes his book inspires others battling life-threatening diseases to realize that they can still accomplish everything they've ever dreamed of. It's been four years now since Jack's bone marrow transplant, and his life is finally starting to look more like that of a normal 15-year-old. It's just been quite the road to recovery, but now I'm 100% and I'm living a normal kid's life with the exceptions of cooking and doing all this stuff. What an inspirational story. Jack, you the man. Now for our third outside the studio summer adventure, the rest of the crew and I decided to see what it takes to train like some of the top athletes 
and athletic programs right here in Torrance. I learned how to synchronize swim at the plunge, and just when I thought I stepped out of my comfort zone, well, reporter Scott Cook one-upped me. He got his groove on with the South High Dance Squad. Brace yourselves. This one's pretty hilarious. What's happening, Torrance? If you're wondering why I'm sweating like a pig, that's because I've been warming up with the South High Drill Team. Now, I'm joined today by Cassie Harris. Cassie, thanks for having us. No problem. Nice to have you here. Now, Cassie is the head coach of the Drill Team here. Cassie, do you think I have what it takes to be South High Drill Team material? Of course, and I think with our help, you got this. Well, Cassie sure has a lot of faith in me, considering I barely made it through the warm-up. But hey, let's get dancing. Cassie and her Spartans start by leading me through some basic dance moves. First up, we have Shanae turns. <laughs> Next, the Spartans teach me Fat Mods, which are a series of six kicks, two lower, two mid-level, and two high kicks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then oh it's passe <laughs> turns, a move I really struggled with. And you're gonna bring your passe, this is what we call a passe. <laughs> a passe. Uh, on your knee. Okay. <laughs> Since I couldn't even master the basics, the Spartans had to do the rest of their routines without me. Well, that about wraps it up from South High School. We got a special sneak peek at some of the drill team's routines that they're going to be showing us this school year. Now, Spartans, how did I do, huh? <laughs> well, they're obviously being nice. I know I have two left feet, like I said. Cassie, thanks again so much for having us. Thanks so much for coming. We had a great time. Thank you. I, I hope I didn't embarrass you too much. No, <laughs> you did great. Uh, well, thank you. Anyways, we look forward to catching up with you guys again on the football field come fall. Awesome. We'll see you there. Yeah, we'll see you there. We'll be ready. Colin, back to you in the studio. After seeing his moves, I could now proudly say I'm not, <laughs> keyword, I'm still laughing, keyword not, the most uncoordinated guy in Southern California. I've now been bumped to the number two spot. Uh-oh, uh-oh, the flux capacitor needs more fuel. I have to go to find Doc Brown. When I come back in 60 seconds, I'll get you my top five sauciest plays of the year and plenty more boom sauce. Get your popcorn ready. I like to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I want to eat. Apples and bananas. I need to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Why can't I eat, eat, eat apples and bananas? One in five children struggles with hunger in America. Support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. Welcome back, everybody. Don't forget to check out our Instagram page. That's the Sports Desk TV for cool pics and video from your South Bay sports scene and a wild behind the scenes look at the show. Now, 2015 brought us so much sauce from the diamond, the hardwood, the pitch, pretty much every surface that you can play a sport on. There were so many top plays, it took me a long, long time to narrow it down, but I finally did. So without further ado, let's get a drum roll. It's your top five sauciest plays of 2015. Whoop, whoop. Play number five, Chrissy Takahashi. She's going to nail the jumper here. That's the game-winning jumper in the CIF Southern Section D2A crown. Let's take another look. Dribble, dribble. Boom. Tagahashi and South crown champs. Play number four.
Bishop Montgomery's Jessica Cito diving play, and the point's gonna go to Bishop. Let's take another look. Cito, she's like, my favorite superhero is Superwoman, so I'm gonna try and imitate her, and she does a nice job of doing that. Point for the Knights as well. Play numero tres. We're gonna go to the softball diamond. Brittany Jumelon knocks that into right center field, and uh, that's your walk-off game winner. The Tatas grab their first CIF Southern Section Division IV title. Play number two. Nois Ricky Morelos singles to center, well, allegedly, and then Eddie Zavala guns him down from center field. Are you kidding me? Let's take another look. Zavala. Right arm, gun, Kruger, Morelos, out. What a play. And play number one, your sauciest play of 2015 here. South Noah Harrison. It's the Civil War game against the Saxons. Harrison, he looks, he's like, oops. And then when he got the ball, he's going to go 16 yards, and he's going to pretty much elude everybody from north, and he's going to take that all the way to the hizzle. Boom sauce. What a play, and then we're gonna roll it again, except we're gonna do a little cool effect. Harrison takes the ball off the hop, and then, oh my God, Harrison! There he goes, can he go all the way? Yeah, that's a touchdown. Woo-wee! Now those are some saucy plays. Now this past year we had our first ever special Friday Night Lights on the Sports Desk show. We got you the highlights, post game, and myself hanging in the student section every Friday night. And I must say, it was an absolute blast. Speaking of myself hanging in student sections all over town, I'm sure you all remember that each week I would ask some ridiculous trivia. If my fan of the night got the question right, they were able to take home a boom sauce tea. Check out your sauciest fan of the year. Here is your question. When was the last time the North Saxons football team made it to the CAF Finals? Is it A, 1892, B, 1361 BCE, C, 1787, or D, 2012? Igor, I know it's a really difficult question, but you have your lifeline, Miss Hibba Summud, right here if you need one. I think I'm going to need the lifeline. You're going to need the lifeline. All right, so we're going to narrow it down. Hibba, help him out. You're the lifeline. 2012, the last one. You can't give him the answer. That's not what the lifeline's supposed to do. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> Boo! All right, all right, all right. Well, your lifeline gave you the answer. She's supposed to narrow it down for you, so I'm going to ask you a bonus question. Here is your bonus question. Who sings the song, Let It Be? Is it A, Calvin Harris, B, Snoop D-O-double-G, C, The Beatles, or D, Hamoon and Ramon? Wait, what was B? <laughs> B was Snoop D O double G. I'm going with C. Uh, C, yeah. C the Beatles? Oh wait, no, no, no. No, A, 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 A. You're gonna go with A. Wait, 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 Igor, Igor, Igor. All right, I'm gonna give you a hint. It's not A. It's not A. Okay, the uh, C. No, no, don't give me the answer. C, C. All right, you're the lifeline. Do you confirm C? Yeah. He says, let it be by the Beatles. That is absolutely correct. You just won yourself a Boom Sauce t-shirt, Igor. Everybody, that is your fan of the night. Igor, come on, man. Who sings let it be by the Be or let it be, I was going to say, by the Beatles? You should know that. You're killing me. Speaking of Friday Night Lights, I had each show start out like this. Hold on. <clears throat> You're watching Friday Night Lights on the sports desk with Colin Kushner. Boom sauce. Here's your best FNL show intro, courtesy of the West High Drill Squad. You're watching Friday Night Lights on the sports desk with Colin Kushner. Boom sauce! <laughs> Cracks me up just watching that again. This is the best of show, so you better have something for the best boom sauce impression it's only fitting right and that goes to i'm not going to spoil it for you take a look boom sauce boom sauce brendan marafino with the coolest most casual boom sauce ever but hey there buddy 
you have, you either have to say it smooth like Brendan or go over the top like me. So I know that on every show I always say, quote, you know the drill. Hit me up on Twitter with pics and videos showing your school spirit, and I'll give you some TV love right here on the show, end quote. Many of you have hit me up over the last year, and while it was tough to narrow it down, but during Torrance High Spirit Week, Tata Nation took spirit to a whole new level with these tweets. That's a cut out of my head, everybody. Would you just look at that? Apparently, they went to Costco and got it made, and we're going to see another picture here of a cut out of my head. It's, it's quite creepy, but it, it's, it's right. For all of you tuning in, Tata Nation has set the Twitter bar pretty high from this point forward. Let's see what you all have in 2016. The best of show just keeps getting saucier. It's time for some individual accolades here. Your 2015 sauciest coach of the year goes to Mr. Don Glavich. Coach G helped lead the Tartars to their first ever CIF Southern Section title. Coach, you to man, he even gave one of the best speeches ever at Torrance's pep rally when they received their CIF championship. Blink, blink. Pretend you are watching the ESPYs right now. It's time for your sauciest male and female athletes of the year. And the award goes to, for the boys, it's no surprise here, North's Mike Juarez. Dude had 60 total touchdowns, helping his team in the second round of the CIF Western Division playoffs. The all-purpose dud has ju just done about everything for the Saxons. I mean, I could go on and on and on, but I'll stop there. Next up, where is he going to land? We'll just have to wait until 2016. My female athlete of the year goes to from Torrance High, Tata softball pitcher Marissa Moreno. She fanned every batter she saw quite literally. Moreno broke the program's single season strikeout record with 264 Ks, passing assistant coach Lauren DeCastro, who fanned 233 back in 2010, 2010. And oh yeah, she helped the Chargers grab their first ever CIF Southern Section crown. Congrats to Mike and Marissa, your sauciest male and female athletes of the year. A boom sauce. All right, everybody, that's going to close the books on another year here on the Sports Desk. As always, we are available on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you just feel like saying hi, you can do that as well. Before I sign off here, uh, here's a special message for you. Take a look. Hey there, Torrance. This is Mr. Boom Sauce coming to you from here in West High. I want to wish you all a Merry Christmas, a Millie Kalikamaka, uh, uh, all that kind of good stuff. Okay, take two. Hey there, Torrance. This is Mr. Boom Sauce. Wishing you a good Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Feliz Navidad, Mele Kalikimaka, and a good heavy hat, uh, boom sauce, miss. Aloha. Thank you to one of our PAs, Paul Knapp. That was a great impression of me. Although it wasn't accurate, I give you a 10 for trying. So I want to take a second and thank you viewers for bringing me into your homes each and every night. It's truly been a privilege and an honor to be able to get you all of your Torrance sports action. On behalf of the entire sports desk and City Cable family, have a happy and healthy new year and enjoy the rest of the holiday season. We'll see you in 2016, Torrance. A boom sauce!